Hey, welcome class to another unit. And for this unit, we're gonna cover Mesoamerican cosmology. How these indigenous people view religion, view these deities and gods as they were all intertwined and connected to the world, plants, animals, and humans. See, gods and deities for Mesoamerican people were not like the Greeks and the Roman gods. They were different. They were more like forces of nature. For example, the sun god was one of the main gods that needed to be constantly fed with sacrifices so it could continue to move and provide energy and light to all living things. The Aztec called it Tonatiu, and we'll talk more about it. There's another important god that I will cover in this lecture, and this is the rain god, which manifest with moisture, water, and fertility. It is responsible for agriculture. Now the rain god and earth, because earth was also viewed as goddess. Her name was Quatilique. So between the rain god and the goddess of earth, these two live in a constant balance to keep plants healthy, like corn which is also a god known as Saint Teotl. He's very important. In some cultures, like the Mayans, the gods use corn to create the first human beings. Many of the creation myth deals with corn, as we're going to cover later in class. So talking about creation, in the Mesoamerican worldview, depended on pairs of entities coming together. As you see, rain god and mother earth in union and it was often yet not always male and female pairs for example if you think about life and death day and night creation and destruction that was a common pattern among mesoamericans sadly mesoamericans were also obsessed with the idea that their cosmic order was shaky life was perceived as constantly in peril, they were always in danger, and in order to preserve a balance with nature, humans have to preserve and safeguard the cosmos and its life-sustaining forces by continuous ritual practice. For all Mesoamericans, the main component for this ritual was blood. Today, there are many records that tell us how not obsessed, but how human sacrifices was a common denominator among the Aztecs, among the Mayans. Even if you were a king back in those days, they would perforate their tongues, even their genitals, to offer their own blood, because they were kings and they were related to the gods, to appease the sun. But also human sacrifices became a common pattern where they have to capture their enemies, bring them to the pyramids, remove their heart, and offer it to the song God. What we historians know about Mesoamerican religion and these gods and deities are based on the account from books known as codices that were written by the friars as they were learning about Mesoamerican culture. Shortly after the Spanish arrived in what today is Mexico, the friars created a 12-volume encyclopedic work known as El Codice de Florentino, which is the Florentine Codex. And the title of this book went by a long name, La Historia General de las Cosas de Nueva España. Yes, let me translate that. It is the general history of the things of New Spain. And in these 12 volumes, the friars documented the culture, religion, and ritual practices about the indigenous people of Mexico. And this has become one of the greatest sources for us historians or anthropologists to be able to understand how Mesoamericans view these gods. For this lecture, I'm not going to talk about every single Mesoamerican god. There were too many, over 200 at least but I will focus on the main ones. 
As I mentioned before, we have been conditioned to view gods with human forms, such as the Greeks or Roman gods. However, the Mesoamerican American gods were not represented like Thor or Hercules. Mesoamerican American gods were more like forces of nature, all connected and interfering with human beings. In essence, Mesoamerican American deities were treated as supernatural entities who, while being powerful, who also be tricked and even killed by humans. According to Dr. David Carrasco, who's one of the leading historians in Mesoamerican religion, he talks about how the human body was a reservoir of energy and the power to return energy to the cosmos. According to David Carrasco, the body contains two centers of energy. One was known as the tonali, the brain, and the second was the tejolia, the heart. The tonali was gaseous substance that resides in the head and hair, and it was attributed to a source that relate to your health and strength. Mesoamericans believe that this life force was connected to a higher power, and the Aztec people had to make sure that their tonali was not lost or did not stray from the head. And that's how we have found so many skulls and the practice of decapitation was widely known among Mesoamericans. Tete Yolia is the second center of energy resides in the heart. It was attributed to be the source of knowledge affections, passions, memory, and will. When the Teolia leaves the body, according to Mesoamericans, it went directly to the sun. So that is why the removal of the heart during human sacrifices, because once you remove the heart, then the energy went straight to the sun. Think about like you putting fuel into the sun. See, it's also important to understand that Mesoamericans thought that life, the world, can be destroyed and also can be recreated. The Aztec believed that every age or cosmic era had a different sun god. So in Aztec mythology, there were four eras that have already gone, and each of them had a different sun. Each of these eras, according to the mythology, had ended in disasters. So every new era, the gods needed to choose a new song, and they hoped that that song was better than the old ones. And in this cycle of creation and destruction represents that duality that Mesoamerican religion is so embedded with. For example, a good duality can be found in Templo Mayor, when we look at the twin pyramids, we notice that one of the pyramids is dedicated to Tlaloc, which is the rain god, and the other pyramid next to it is dedicated to Huitzilopochtli, which is the god of war, the god that relates to the sun god. Once again, think about the sun and the rain, because they both are responsible for the cycle of agriculture. So this duality and the joining of the opposites atop the Templo Mayor, it is the very character of the Aztec religion. At the beginning of the Aztec world, if we go back into the Genesis, gods sacrificed themselves to ensure that human race will flourish, and in return require sacrifice. That is why in many archaeological sites, let's say the Mayans, the Teotihuacanos, the Aztecs, we have found evidence of human sacrifices. It's important also to understand that all things had a noumena. And a noumena is like a spiritual power. Earth, vegetation, plants, flowers, animals, they all have this, this power in them. So Mesoamericans, believe that we are all born with a Nahuatl or animal spirit. There's like a supernatural teacher 
guiding us to life and giving us advice through songs, dreams, and visions. Once again, it's all connected to nature. For example, Corrin, who took the form of a god, like I mentioned before, he went by the name of Saint Teotl for the Aztec, and in many myths of creation, Corrin was ground and turned into a masa, which is dough. That's how we made tortillas, we made tamales, and they created the first humans out of this dough. So for the Mayas, when a family member died, they used to place corn inside their mouth. They believed that corn would provide them with energy in their journey to a subterranean world known as Mitra. And now that I'm talking about Mitra, once again, everything is connected. Earth was a plane. It was viewed as a flat disk. And on top, or above Earth, there were 13 heavens. Not like the heavens that the Christians used. And under this flat disk, there was nine underworlds. So think about this plane. You have the flat disk. Above, you have the 13 heavens. And below, you have the underworld. And that really deals with the Dia de los Muertos. Because for Mesoamerican belief, when you die, you went to all these worlds. Not depending on how you behave, how you are alive, but more so the way you die. So let's say you die in a storm. That means that you were killed by Tlaloc, the rain god. Then you're going to go to the world of Tlaloc. Let's say you died in a battle. These people will go to another world, and that's the world of the sun. And it was kind of like a cool paradise place. But see, the idea of a paradise and hell was not something that Mesoamericans really believe in. And that's something that we also need to understand. I know I've been using the word dead when someone died, but really for Mesoamerican people, they didn't die. They just move on to a different world. And that's how we celebrate El Dia de los Muertos, because these souls could travel through these different worlds. So through that journey, which we celebrate in November 1st and 2nd, for Mesoamericans, it was celebrated in August, actually for a whole month. And there was an opportunity for family members to come to the plane of Earth and meet their family members through offerings or through building an altar. That's something that we're going to cover more when we get to El Día de los Muertos, but now you have an idea how all this is connected. That's all for now. I know it's a lot, believe it or not, and if I have to go into details with all these guys, we'll never finish. You can actually get your master's and PhD in Mesoamerican cosmology. Have a wonderful day, and I hope this helps you to understand the concept of this deities and God. Take care.